Good morning, Brother Chad Long from Delhi Baptist Church this morning. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm a little under the weather, so we will not be having church tonight. It's Wednesday, but um, we will have our devotional now, and uh, I look forward to seeing you Sunday, and I'm sorry for any inconvenience, but that wasn't the only reason. Um, me being under the weather is only part of it. We had a couple of accidents in our community with people um, who live among us and go to church with us and I'm not going to name them in a YouTube video but they need our prayers and their families need our prayers um, two different men were, were hurt pretty badly and uh, I think they're going to be okay but I don't know so let's be in prayer for one another and for our church and our community be in prayer for me as I try to get better and uh, I'll be in prayer for you as we all have our struggles and uh, I don't know what Yours are always, but I do uh, pray for all of you, and I love you. I really do. And love being the subject, we are now in Third John. And uh, Lord willing, we'll finish it this week. And maybe even get through with Jude, I don't know. But we'll at least, uh, we'll at least get to look at these things. Um, somebody has joked that these are... One eye John, two eye John, and third eye John, which is just a humorous way of remembering first, second, third John. They're all very similar, uh, written probably close together at the end of John's life. Some argue before the Isle of Patmos, some argue after the Isle of Patmos. <coughs> I personally think before, but I don't know that. Um, others, like Dr. McGee, think it was after. Um, but we don't know. We just know it was later in his life, between his mid eighties, mid nineties. He was a he was an elder for sure, and uh, men didn't live that long back then. Very often, it was uh, unusual because of all the. Well, let's just say that people didn't live that long back then. Leave it at that. Um, but John does, and, and select others do. We come to Third John, and we find that it's another personal letter. I told you when we read Second John that I I don't know who he was writing to, but I believe it was a lady and not a church because she had children, and we can have children, and we can even have spiritual children. Paul called Timothy his son, but a church doesn't have children. A church has members, so I just happen to believe while church fits in every other way. <clears throat> just don't think that you would uh, I mean a church is referred to as a lady in fact she's a bride a chaste bride prepared for the groom who is coming to get her soon I hope but uh, I'm not going to go back over this the, the, the point is I think it was a lady it doesn't have to be Mary I just think Mary is a, is a good a good possibility but I still think it's a lady he thought highly of either way and in chapter 3 or, I'm sorry in 3rd John we see another personal letter, this time not to a lady, but to another man. And I'll read it to you, Third John, chapter 1, verse 1, says, The elder, that's John, unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So in two verses, in three places, he says, I love this man. Now, when I read things like that, it makes me think of people that I love in the faith. Uh, and I won't use last names on here. <clears throat> people who know our community will know who I'm talking about. But um, people outside of our community won't because I won't use last names. But I love Brother Gary. Uh, I love Brother Tim. I love Brother David. I love Brother Mike, both of them. Um, Adrian Ellison. Uh, Landry, all of these brothers, and, and, and more. Bill, I love these men because <clears throat> I see in them a desire to follow the Lord, to grow closer to Him, to serve Him, to honor Him, to believe what He tells them, and to love one another. And, and these are things that you see. I think of my grandfather, Brother Alvis, who's gone on to be with the Lord, and I just love that man. Well, beloved, whom I love in the truth, and beloved, I wish above all things thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. He says, I want nothing for you but uh, long life and health. 
I want you to be well and do good. So these things that are are said about Gaius are things we might say about somebody we really care about. And so it's a personal letter. And on the one hand, you might ask, why is that canonized in Scripture? That's from that man to that man. On the other hand, you might realize that these are examples to us and that the message throughout 3 John has more to do with uh, our individual walk with Christ than it does one particular man 2,000 years ago. And so there's spiritual application in all of these things. That's why God gave them to us. Normally, I don't read other people's letters. I mean, <laughs> I don't open anybody's mail but my own. I don't typically want to get deep, deep into somebody's personal letter, but this one is intended for Gaius then and for us today. So you might just say John's writing to you here through the leading of the Holy Spirit. And if you're, uh, if, if you're walking with the Lord in truth, then you're beloved as well. And, um, and the Lord wishes you uh, a certain prosperity and health. Not necessarily as the prosperity teachers give, but to prosper in God, in His will, in, doing, in glorifying Him and honoring Him and following Him. Verse 3 says, For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. Here's what he's saying. I loved you already. I thought a lot of you, but then I got word of all you're doing for the Lord, and then I just glorify God all the more. And I just rejoice all the more. That's what he's saying. I rejoice greatly because you who I love, you who are beloved to me, you who I pray for, for prosperity and health, um, who's already prospering in your soul. I, pro I pray you, uh, you prosper in what you're doing, not in money, but in what you're doing for the Lord. And then I hear back, and I rejoice because the brethren came and testified of the truth that's in you and how you walk in it. Now that's a good testimony to have and to give for toward somebody else. And I can only hope that there's somebody out there who would testify those things about me and about you and about our church and our community. These are good things to be said about us. Things to be desired to be said about us. First of all, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. He considered him one of his own children. Probably led him to the Lord and even if he didn't, he had been discipling him as his pastor and his friend. So John, who pastored at Ephesus for a time, knew this Gaius, knew him well, loved him, was proud of him, and was letting him know it. In the first four verses of this, five verses of this uh, letter. Speaking of five verses, he says in verse five, Beloved, he's talking to him, calling him beloved again, reminding him that he's loved. Thou dost faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers which have borne witness of thy charity before the church whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort thou shalt do well let me break that down for you he says you're faithful whatever you do for the brethren and to strangers you, you don't just you're not just faithful to people you know you're faithful to people you don't know now that's a rarity um, one of the things I love about our church is, so far as I know, we've always been good to strangers. And, and uh, people come through, they need gas. Our church prepares for them to have a, a gas jug sitting there ready for them to have to be used. In fact, um, sometimes I forget to go and refresh it so it doesn't go bad. Um, <clears throat> I need to do that when I get home. We uh, give them food. We uh, give them guidance. We try to help them in any way that we can. Um, We've, uh, we've tried to be good to strangers just as we're good to brethren and, and that's what we're called to do and that's what Gaius did and that's what John is talking about here he says uh, <clears throat> these strangers and these brethren are the ones that are talking about you I love it when the testimony given is from somebody else and not from you I, if you come tell me how great you are automatically you rub me wrong you might be great. You might have done wonderful things, but you wouldn't believe me. People have come up to me and told me about it. Oh, man, I taught Sunday school for 25 years, and I I did this in my church, and we used to have a bus ministry, and we went soul winning, and, man, we were on fire, and we were doing all these things. And I'm thinking, well, that's great. I, I'm proud to hear it. What are you doing now? 
the job don't end, see? And even if it transitions into another job, which is perfectly fine, you know, if you don't feel led to teach Sunday school anymore, but you want to be the church janitor, that's fine. Sometimes your job may transition, but the job, the, the, the work don't stop. And I love it when the testimony given about a person comes from somebody else. I love that. And I, I love it in my own life, too. I don't want to stand there and tell you what I've done and how I've done it. Sometimes I give examples, but not because I'm tooting my own horn. I'm, I'm, I'm typically trying to illustrate something. <clears throat> but I love it when somebody else sees the good in you or me and, and they're willing to tell about it. He says, man, these strangers, these brethren, they've borne witness to that charity before the church. They've talked about it, and the church knows of that. Whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. In other words, what you've done for them has helped them to grow and go forward in their journey toward the Lord. You've had a hand in that. You've helped them to grow and to do better. And that's wonderful. I'll close the first seven for time's sake because there's 14 verses in this letter and I want to get halfway through. It says, Because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. Now there's a reference here to traveling teachers and preachers, missionaries. People who refused to receive from the Gentiles because they didn't want it said that they were endorsed and, and funded by ungodly places. Now, that doesn't always happen today. I knew a preacher one time who said, Look, uh, we'll accept money from the church of Satan just so long as they don't tell us how to spend it. <laughs> now, he was joking, but I heard a preacher say that once. And what he meant was, when God allows for money to come here, we use it to glorify Him. We don't think about where it came from. Well, at least here, the Bible says don't do it that way. Because it says their name, uh, for their name's sake, for His name's sake, sorry, for the, for the sake of the name of the Lord, they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles, receiving nothing, from outside sources because they wanted it to be abundantly clear they were funded by the Lord and, and, and guided by the Lord and used of the Lord. And if you get money from outside sources, then even if you don't do anything wrong with it, the, uh, the impropriety, the, 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 the illusion of it is there. We need to be careful about that today, not just in our individual lives, but as a nation. Um, our, and I don't want to get political, but our our, our uh, leaders often do things that don't look good. Even if it's not illegal, it certainly uh, doesn't look very, very moral. And so, <clears throat> in every aspect of our life, we need to be careful what we endorse, what we allow to endorse us, um, how we uh, go forward with the truth. And how we honor the name of Jesus. We don't want to soil His name. I'll say it this way and I'm through with that point. Um, there was a time in my youth where I was proud to get money when I needed it. To do whatever I needed to do. But if uh, for whatever reason. And Saddam Hussein's not alive anymore. So I can use him in an illustration. But if Saddam Hussein sent me a million dollars. In my youth I'd have took it and said. Hey man I can't help it he sent me money. I don't work for him. But now, I don't want anything that comes from it because I don't need the money that bad. And if I took it and used it, well, then it just looks like I'm working for him, even if I'm not. And I don't want to dishonor my nation or my family or my God by the things that I do. Um, I'm not picking on anybody, but I've known people that like to gamble, Christians who will gamble, and they justify it however they want to. And then when they win, they bring the money and they put it in the coffers of the church. They say, well, at least we put it in the plate. Let me just be flat out honest with you. God don't need your casino money. And he don't want it. He doesn't want that impropriety mixed into the good he's trying to do. That basically, that's just endorsing sin. And he does not endorse sin. He's a, he's a righteous and holy God. And he doesn't want that to take place. Now, if that upsets you, then forgive me. I'm not trying to upset you, but I'm telling you the truth. What we do needs to look good for the Lord. We need to be careful how we handle God's money and do things that are God's, and all money is God's. 
all of it's his. Every dime that crosses your hand, um, it belongs to him because everything belongs to him. And so we need to be, you know, careful how we use it and treat it. I don't play the lottery. I did when I was young and stupid, but I don't, so I won't win it. Um, when I was young, I thought I'd win the lottery and give a big chunk to the church, and it, uh, God would be proud of me. That's the dumbest thing in the world. God's not going to be proud of that. He doesn't need it. He doesn't want it. Because then, people would glorify Almighty Chad and not Almighty God. God wants to do the work, and He wants to get the, cre uh, the glory for it, and He wants us to honor Him with our lives and the things that we do. And uh, when we do that, People will talk about us like they were talking about gays. And they'll talk good about us. And, uh, and I don't do it for that reason, but it is, it is uh, comforting to know that I can have a good testimony if I do things right. And that's, the, that's what we ought to want to do, all of us. We ought to want to do things right. And uh, so it'll honor God and honor His church and honor each other, our family in Christ. Well, listen, y'all have a wonderful day. We'll finish uh, for a third John tomorrow lord willing and we'll uh we'll move into jude and then see where the lord takes us from there you'll have a wonderful day and a blessed week and pray for those in our church that are struggling there's a lot going on right now